Hi, my name is Gigi. And my name is Lana. We're from team 12827, the Crazy Cat Ladies. Today, we're going to talk about our Navicat Java library for navigation. Navicat complements our other two libraries, Schrodinger for state machines and Nyan for subsystems. Navicat uses Roadrunner, the amazing motion planning library by team 8367, Acme Robotics. You may wonder how navigation relates to robotics. Well, navigation basically means a robot's knowledge of its location, also known as localization, and its ability to move to a target location. If your robot has a good navigation system, the focus can shift to giving the robot instructions on where to go rather than how to get there. Now for some specifics on Roadrunner. With Roadrunner, you can specify complex paths for the robot, including beginning and ending orientation and position. Roadrunner determines how the motors should be powered to follow the path and then computes the position of the robot using odometry in order to make adjustments according to the actual speed and travel of the wheels. It also uses motion profiling to constrain velocity, acceleration, and jerk of the robot to reduce wheel slippage and wear and tear of robot parts. Using Schrodinger, Nyan, and Navicat together, you can create autonomous op modes which have a powerful, easy to use, reliable navigation ability which is accessible as a subsystem and is part of a state machine framework which makes it easy for robot components to perform complex operations while navigating. Currently, Navicat only works for robots with a mechanum drivetrain and no adrometry free wheels. The drivetrain motors must have encoders, which are properly configured also. We've created a code lab that will help you get started with Navicat. It guides you through the steps required to set up Roadrunner and create an FTC op mode that uses the Navicat library for navigation. You will learn how to perform tuning to determine the robot's configuration values using the Roadrunner Quick Start project. Learn how to install Navicat into your FTC Android Studio project and learn how to create an autonomous op mode that uses Navicat. The code lab requires a computer with Android Studio and a robot with a Mechanum drivetrain. You'll download the Roadrunner Quick Start project and open it in Android Studio. Then find the Drive Constraints class and open it. As mentioned in the code lab, you can find more about the specifics of the Quick Start project and how Roadrunner works in documentation provided by Acme Robotics. Now we are going to move on to the manual configuration settings for Roadrunner. The first step involves providing the values related to the encoders and motor speed. These don't require testing. You can find them in information provided by the manufacturer of your drivetrain motor. Ticks per rev refers to the number of encoder ticks per revolution of the motor, and max RPM refers to the maximum revolutions per minute of the motor itself. We provide a sample here that shows values for common motors like the Andymark Rev Never Rest and Rev HD Hex. The next three values can all be determined by examining the drivetrain of your robot, the radius of the drive wheels, the gear ratio which is applied between the motor and the wheels, and the track width between the left and right wheels. The gear ratio should include any gearbox which is mounted onto the motor. For example, a Never S40 motor with a mounted 80 tooth gear driving a 40 tooth gear on the wheel axle would have a total gear ratio of 20 to 1. We have provided an example showing a simple case of direct drive with a 20 to 1 gearbox, such as the Rev or Indymark orbitals. These have an actual ratio of 19.2 to 1. In this example, there is no additional gearing up or down from gears or sprockets. Finally, a few modifications are required in the simple Mechanum Drive class. You will need to update the motor names as well as the IMU name so that they match the configuration of your robot. And you'll need to reverse the direction of two of the two right motors since these face the opposite direction from the left motors. When you have the correct drive constant values, you can begin the first test called localization test. While the op mode is running and the robot is being driven, Roadrunner is actively calculating the robot's position and heading based on the drive constants you provided earlier, gear ratio, wheel size, etc. In combination with the information about the activity of the motors from the motor encoders, make sure that the values displayed correspond to the movement of the robot as you drive. 
In this example video, we drive the robot straight for 12 inches, and we see that on the driver station phone. If you haven't heard of proportional integral derivative, PID control, before, it might sound kind of scary, but the general concepts are pretty simple. Using driving as an example, proportionate control would involve turning the steering wheel more when the car is further out of its lane. Integral control would have you turn the steering wheel more if it doesn't respond enough when you turn it less. Derivative control would have you turn the steering wheel more when the car is moving further out of its lane. The next test is all about ensuring that the motor controllers in the expansion or control hub have PID constants which cause the motor to move precisely at the speeds that Roadrunner computes for navigating along the specified paths. Basically, if the motor needs to speed up a lot, the motor controller should set the power much higher. And if the amount of power that is supplied does not cause the robot to move faster, it should be increased, etc. The test has the robot repeatedly travel back and forth over a distance of 72 inches. If you don't have that much room available, change the distance to a smaller number of inches. You will want to perform these tests on game tiles to obtain accurate measurements for the real game environment. You will also need to rerun the tests after any changes that affect the weight of the robot or the distribution of weight on the wheels. While running the test, you'll use the FTC dashboard to see how closely the actual motor velocity matches the target. Change the KP KI and KD parameters under VeloPID in the dashboard to reduce the distance between the red and green lines. In other words, error, when you find the best values. Next, you'll perform the straight test. This test will validate the values set in the preceding steps. Straight test uses Roadrunner to plan and execute a drive 60 inches straight ahead. The robot should land within a few inches of the target distance. The next test is called drive track width and will calculate the best value to use for the robot's track width parameter by turning the robot and monitoring the actual heading as reported by the IMU. The computed track width is displayed as telemetry on the driver station. Use this value to replace the one you entered into drive constants.java. The next test is called the turn test which will allow you to verify that the calculated track width is suitable for the turning characteristics of your robot. Try changing the angle constant in turn test dot java to several different values and observing how well the robot matches after running the op mode. Good news, only two tests left now. The spline test will show off the ability that Roadrunner provides to smoothly execute more complex paths. So far, Roadrunner has been keeping track of the estimated position of the robot during the tests but it has not yet used this information to affect its movement. Follower PID Tuner is your opportunity to turn on and tune the follower capability which uses the robot's position as feedback to make corrections to the robot's movements. Find the translational PID and heading PID constants in the sample mechanum drive.java class and try low single digit values for KP to improve the robot's ability to execute the square pattern accurately. Awesome! That's it for the Roadrunner tuning. Now we're ready to get Navicat set up. First, you'll need an FTC project. You can either reuse your quick start project or create a new clone of the FTC SDK. As we describe in this step of the code lab, you'll need to edit the Gradle files so that Android Studio can download the libraries. You'll also change the compile options settings so that you can use Java 8 features. Almost there. If you have created a project for trying out Navicat, you're going to want to copy the drive constants.java file from the Quick Start project into your new project. If you have completed our Nyan code lab, you will be aware that Nyan provides a framework for creating autonomous op modes that cut down on the amount of code that is needed. Navicat takes this further with base classes for your autonomous op mode and a top level robot class which has navigation features built in. The result is that you can have a navigation-enabled autonomous op mode with the only 27 lines of code shown here. You'll recognize the translational PID and heading PID constants from the follower PID tuner text. Replace the values with the ones that you have determined for your own robot. You'll also want to use the appropriate drive motor names for your robot in place of FL, FR, 
BL, and BR, along with the hub number for each in place of two. Update IMU and INU1 if you have different names and replace IMU1 with null if you only have a single control slash expansion hub. This op mode won't do anything interesting, but try running it to make sure that there aren't any errors and then we'll make it more interesting. In the Nyan code lab, there's a description of how you can orchestrate the actions of your robot in an autonomous op mode using a state machine. That's exactly what we'll do here by adding to the state machine method. Note that several different navigation methods are used to create the complex path that the robot follows. Blind to, slow to, reverse blind to, and to. Each of these methods takes a target pose, X, Y, and heading. Although Roadrunner natively uses radians, Navicat accepts degree values to make things easier. Run this op mode and your robot should follow a pattern like this. I hope you've enjoyed learning about Roadrunner. That's all for today's video, and I'm sad to say this is our last SSSSS. We'd like to thank everyone who has been watching and supporting us. We had so much fun this summer hosting these incredible seminars. They shared some great knowledge, and we encourage you to go back and watch them. Bye for now.